We've been interested in the Tasmanian Devil uh, for a few years. Uh, as you probably know, the Tasmanian Devil is a marsupial and we're marsupial experts. It's the biggest um, carnivorous marsupial there is since we managed to get rid of all the Tasmanian tigers. So it has a very special place in Australia. And you probably know that the Tasmanian Devil's in a heap of trouble because this, this, tr this uniquely horrible cancer that is eating them up, literally. And it's, um, it's actually unique in the sense that it can transmit from animal to animal, which is just unheard of in cancers. So it's the cells that are being transmitted from animal to animal. So some time ago we became very interested in the chromosomes of this cancer and what changes they had been to make the cell cancerous. And more recently we've been very interested in the genes that are expressed in the cancer uh, because they can tell us uh, where the cancer came from and uh, what is unique about it which might give us a bit of an idea how to cope with it. Uh, the research that we've done came about uh, really because of our interest in the Tasmanian devil and the chromosomes, we became aware of an Australian uh, woman, Liz Murchison, who is at that stage working in the United States on something quite different, but on genomics. But she, being Tasmanian, was very interested in the plight of the devil and was actively looking for funds and sponsorship to do some work at the genome level. So uh, I, uh, I introduced myself to her and said we were interested in genes and chromosomes in all marsupials and we actually had quite a lot of information that would be useful to her. So she then applied for a NHMRC fellowship uh, to come back to my lab which she did last year and she spent um, a year in my laboratory. The research that we did found uh, a set of genes which are active in the tumour. So what we did was we looked at the transcripts, uh, so each gene is transcribed into RNA and we can look at that RNA and infer what were the genes that are most active. So we can get a readout of, uh, by sequencing all the RNA in the cell, we can get a readout of what genes are being transcribed and in what proportion. Uh, and so what we did was to have a look at the RNA from several normal tissues of the devil and compare that with the tumours from several different animals. So we were looking for a unique footprint that, that really told us um, what was unique about the cancer and what we hoped we would be able to do was to take that profile and compare it with normal tissues to see where the cancer came from in the first place. Because what we know about the cancer is that it probably started off in a single animal uh, 10 or 12 years ago uh, and then uh, because devils are uniquely uh, low on genetic variation it could actually be spread from animal to animal but we'd really like to know what was the cell type that the cancer came from in the first place and lots of people have had a guess at it just from the look of the cancer uh, but we were hoping that we could do something at the molecular level that would tell us that this cancer came from the kidney or the brain or whatever and in fact that was extremely successful we were quite surprised we were able to pull out something like 14,000 genes uh, from the normal tissues and from the cancer but we could then compare the profile and it really stuck, uh, stood out that the uh, cancer came from a particular kind of cell that wraps itself around the nerve sheets and makes the uh, insulation for the nerves. It's called a Schwann cell um, and it makes very specific proteins and those proteins are still being expressed by the cancer. Uh, and so that told us right away where that cancer came from in the first place. And of course everybody is looking for a, a chink in the armour of this cancer. You know, something about the cancer which is unique, some way we can treat it, some way we can detect it. Um, and what we have been able to find out, Liz was able to find that there was a particular protein that's expressed by Schwann cells, which is also very highly expressed by cancer cells. And you can actually stain for this protein. And that means that the little groups of cancer cells really light up uh, with the stain. So you can look at a section and say, oh, there's, there may be only half a dozen cells there, but they're definitely cancer cells. 
and that could really help us look at the early stages of the disease, which is a real problem because, of course, what we're trying to do now is to set up captive colonies that are, are, are disease-free and which will eventually replace the wild animals if the wild animals become extinct, which is what is predicted at the moment. So we think we have a pretty good diagnosis, which is very sensitive and could help us study the early stages of, of the disease. Well, the next step in this research is probably to use what we've learned to look at um, how the cancer cell has evolved in the past and how it is evolving because, of course, it's an organism essentially that's free of the animal. So we don't know if it's evolving to be nastier or evolving to be more benign. Um, and there are some new strains of the tumour which actually look very nasty and so we're particularly anxious to, to track the tumour as it spreads into new populations. Uh, some of the other work that we're doing in this lab, uh, my student Hannah Bender did her PhD on this, is to look at the chromosomes uh, and the genes of the tumour and find out how it's changed from the normal cell and to try and isolate the genes which have changed and make this, this tumour cancerous in the first place. And in fact, because this tumour can be passed on from animal to animal. It's very unique. You know, the tumour is a clone that goes on forever. So in most cancers, you don't get a chance to look at what happens in the long term. So we have a unique chance to have a look at the evolution of this cancer. We'd like to find out what genes were changed in the first place, what other changes reinforce those changes. Um, it may give us a chink in the armour of the cancer that we can use to fight it, but uh, it may give us some very long-term information about how cancers are caused and how they evolve, not just in devils, but perhaps in humans as well.